What's up everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Death Road to Canada with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony and this is Death Road to Canada. We are continuing our run here with uh, a rare character that we recruited at the very end of the last episode. We got the Contender and Tommy's still with us as well. The horror continues. Yikes. Contender has high health. That's nice. You're not Alexander. That's true. Who's Alexander? The group finds a waterlogged store. There's a lot of mannequins inside. Barely visible in the darkness. The whole store is especially creepy. There may be some moldy supplies left in there. I think we can send the contender in safely. I think there is a chance that Tommy would get hurt if he has bad composure. And he does. The contender probably also has bad composure, but she has so much health that it'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is send someone in. The contender. Contender enters the dark and creepy store. She keeps calm, takes the loot she finds, and gets out of there. Her composure is revealed. It's really good. She has, she got us uh, nine food and three medical supplies. That's great. You're not Alexander. Is she referring to our familiar face, Alexander? Because that'd be weird. Also, is his name Alexander or did I just call him Alex? The group finds an inn open for business. Is it a movie reference that I'm not understanding? From like, uh, I don't know, Rocky, the Rocky series? Anyway, give me 10 food and I'll watch over you while you sleep. Ha! <laughs> She's super creepy. Uh, we do have to pay the 10 food. We can tell her to say it, not spray it, and get a little bit of a charge rather than just driving off with no sleep. But I think our best bet is to pay the 10 food. We can afford it. It's going to be a big loss of food, but that's fine. Pay the 10 food. I wish we had a, a charge on our uh, cool it because this is like the best one to do that with. It, but... Now we can't, not in this run anyway. The group pays to stay the night, stay a night at the inn. It's comfortable. No one wants zombies creeping while they're sleeping. Hehe, <laughs> lose 10 food. The innkeeper serves up an amazing breakfast, which boosts our morale. It's, it's a good encounter. I prefer when we have more people cause you know, or when we can haggle it down and not waste food. Suddenly a giant fissure erupts across the road ahead. It's a big, it's big, super big. Uh, the asphalt buckles on either side of the, making for a pretty sick ramp. We're gonna gun it. Contender grabs the wheel and pounds the gas pedal. She, The car bolts forward, ripping a howling screech into the sky. Tommy's morale increases. <laughs> nice. The car barely makes it, but sinks like an anvil and smashes into the ground. Chunks of the car fly in various directions. It took a beating, but it's still running. And that is A-OK -okay with me. Trading on the death road, the group is driving down a long stretch of road. Uh, no threats on the horizon, but not much else of interest either. You have 16 food left. We're going to visit the trader camp. Maybe recruit a crazy cat lady, but looks like not. Um, mechanic for, heart, for hire. Marty is tired of being stuck in this camp. She will join you for a small fee of five food. She claims to be great at fixing cars and machinery. She talks about how she used to own a repair shop. We're going to leave Marty for now. I don't think we'll recruit her either. Um, what we really need is someone paranoid, but... That's not likely. You know, after Dolores died in the stupidest way possible. Gas to snacks conversion? We're going to say no thanks. No thanks for that one. We have 136 gas and plenty of food. Pipe bomb? Yep. We're going to back away slowly. We're going to tell someone to cool it. I just don't know who. Blade Master? We're going to leave him, but we'll probably tell him to cool it. What are you? Rifle ammo sales... Seller. Seller. No thanks. I think we're going to tell the... Uh, Blade Master to cool it. Tommy tells the Blade Master to cool it. He ignores it and starts talking about swords. So we drive on off. Last fight seemed like the other guy was under the weight class. Hmm. Factory complex. The group gets overwhelmed by a horde and flees for a nearby factory. There must be another way out inside. It's a very thick hunting swarm late night. This is going to be the contender's chance to prove herself. She has two boxing clubs, gloves. Well, she has a boxing glove and an uppercut. That's pretty cool. Tommy's got his grenade and a wrench and Kung Fu, of course. We're gonna keep controlling Tommy because it might be dangerous not to. And especially right as we enter, I figured it'd be pretty crowded. Contender, don't you dare. Don't you dare, Contender. Contender died. Uh, contender is useless. I think our best bet is to just run through the rest of the factory. We can't pick up our boxing gloves, of course. There is no doors here. There is no other way out. What is, okay, I see it. I can get to it. 
Let's go. Okay. I can't believe Contender just died. I thought she was going to be great. She had super awesome health. Uh, she was set to fight in, which is definitely the best option for this scenario. That was crazy. Close that. Uh, was there anything we could have done? 100% no. But can we get out of this alive? 100% unlikely. Maybe. We'll see. Die. Okay. Got another... Ooh. Okay. Uh, I'm stuck a little bit, but that's okay. We're through it. That shelf was in a weird spot. I don't know who decided to put a shelf there, but they weren't very smart. Come on. All right. Oh, you know what? They might have been really smart. They were blocking that door with a shelf. What am I thinking? Of course, that's a good idea. Uh, I just want to find a way out of here. Didn't have time to close that door, unfortunately. And uh, also, I got bit, which sucks. I guess that's the end of this run. Not the best way to have uh, ended because it wasn't a victory, but we have died on the death of Canada. Dang it, I blame the contender. I blame every, it was everybody's fault but my own. To uh, paraphrase Ellie earlier, we're gonna do a new game here. Um, Mega Buff and Paranoid works for me. Ultra Fit Bandit, we'll randomize this one a little bit. A Berserk Surgeon? I want a Berserk something or other. Not a Berserk Surgeon or a Car Nut. You know what? No, no, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep trying here. Come on. Anything good. Oh, oh no, there's a berserk engineer. I don't want that either. Um Come on. Berserk. Okay. This is where I'm gonna load. I'm gonna choose Dog and Pony, he's a berserk martial artist. And this paranoid mega buff person is good enough for me so we're gonna go to the game mode and s oh crap uh that was an accident uh, new game overwrite this one okay still the same two characters good I hit this because I wanted to hit this familiar extreme just for something new Okay, we're gonna start. And same two characters. Uh, Margaret hears rumors that Canada is a safe place. Zombies get hit for extra damage if they are knocked down first. Weird. Some weapons have high knockdown. Okay, more. Start with the cat lady. I think it's a good idea. Get ready to get catted up. Ask cat lady to join. The group accepts cat lady to the team. Cat lady joins the team. Onward to Canada. Um, the developer actually... Uh, one sec. The, uh, to start the journey, blah, 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 y'all mark. Um, the developer specifically said, like, hey, would you please start with the cat lady so that, uh, we could test her more, get, get a lot more testing in, and because of that, and because she does have downsides, look at that, a cat! Okay, um, I don't feel bad about winning a run with the cat lady. So I don't feel bad about starting the run with the cat lady. All right. And you know, it's not a guaranteed win either. She is supposedly the most overpowered character in the game, but I don't know if I believe that. Can she lift cars? Can she, uh, lift cars? I don't know. I'm not saying TLB is the most overpowered character in the game. Obviously, he's not, because he's really only good in scenarios where there is a lot of stuff to throw. But, he's, you know, lifting cars is the most overpowered individual move in the game. I think. A lot of ammo, a lot of food. The cat is very powerful, and overall, we don't care if the cat survives the scenario because we get a new one next time. Hopefully we get just a lot of cats. I think it'd be awesome to have like 20 cats uh, just around us. We got a machete or hatchet. Not a machete, obviously, a hatchet. But 
Uh, that's gonna be nice. We didn't get any of those, like, last run that I can remember. Food, please. Oh, right, I can pick that up. There we go. And one more food down here as well. Come on. I'm gonna switch to Kung Fu because I think it's better than the hatchet for me, which means I'm gonna give the hatchet to the cat lady. She's got her own claws? Now that's weird. I'm gonna give it to Margaret then. Come on. Oh yeah. Doing a lot of zombie killing here. There were there were a lot more zombies than you usually get at a first encounter. And I know it's extreme mode, but even so. I think we needed to change the pace from rare characters extreme after some pretty bad losses. So, we're doing familiar faces extreme. I wanna grab this food. For reasons. Uh, just in case, like, you know, the obvious thing would be to grab it on our way out. But what if we can't get to that exit on our way out safely? So, it was safe to grab it then. No reason not to. I still can't believe that Dolores wouldn't just get in the car. I gotta remember, I gotta react faster in that situation. And switch to the character and get them into the car. But it's just such a, a rare occurrence that I don't think to do that right away. So, she died. And what's up with the contender? That was the first time we've ever recruited the contender. I don't know how long the contender has been around. Maybe since release, for all I know. But she didn't do anything. She just let herself die. And she had super high health, which, which means letting herself die took a lot of effort. Crazy. Crazy stuff. I probably should have been controlling her, but I thought Tommy was more likely to die without being under my control. And then because of the contender dying, Tommy had really no chance of getting through it. We got a lot farther than I thought we would, to be honest. I might have just damaged our chassis a little bit. We're gonna get out of here. We got all of the loot we could find. The cat didn't get in the car with us. Is it a member of the team now? No, it's not. She just has the cat. I thought that's how it would work. I just wasn't totally sure. We're gonna endure the smell. The group endures the smell zone all night until passing out. They are not happy in the morning. Morale's going down. Cat lady started with low morale. That's not cool. Uh, we eat a decent meal. Cat lady's morale increases. And cat lady's attitude is revealed as actually really good. Um. She didn't steal any food, which is nice. That's her thing. My cats don't bite. Those are just kisses. Molotov making. The group finds a trashed house with some bottles and tattered rags. Uh, we can't spare the gas. And Molotovs are too dangerous anyway. We'll take them if we get them, but we won't spend our resources on them. Early morning zombies. The group spies a city from a distance. There's more undead than usual, but it's early in the day, so they should be groggy, at least at first. It's a moderate and sluggish swarm in the morning. When driving into the city, the group spots something. I'm gonna go with the lost safe house. The bar will just have bottles at it. Maybe a person? But we're, go we're gonna go with what, what I already decided on. Another cat. So does that mean we have two of them now? No, it's just, it's just the one still. That's unfortunate. I thought, when it, when they described the cat lady as the most overpowered character in the game, I assumed it was because she would just continuously accumulate cats. The cat got into the car with us, and then I guess jumped back out later. It doesn't matter. She does have a really creepy grin on her face. Okay, that's empty. Yeah, I was really looking forward to having like a dozen cats eventually by day like four come on don't die also if I had got, gotten damaged there that would have been a hundred percent my own fault I would take credit for that one alrighty safe here now I don't know about that but I have my doubts I want to go in and out really quick didn't want to be blocked if there were a ton of zombies and there weren't any zombies, so that's nice. Maybe it is safe here. Maybe we can just end the game here instead of uh, needing to go all the way to Canada for safety. That would be a really nice turn of events, a nice plot twist. I'd be happy with it anyway. Nice. Cleaving is excellent. I love being able to hit multiple zombies at a time. 
If we can get a claymore this time around, that'd be cool. Or if if it's possible to recruit the Wiz, I'd love to have the Wiz plus Crazy Cat Lady all at once. We would be unstoppable. And then a uh, a last minute anime girl recruitment. Though we're not in rare characters mode, so it's not super likely to get that many rare characters. But anime girl uh, at the end of a run is OP because her whole deal is that she doesn't she doesn't last very long, and she explodes and damages everyone. But what if she never gets a chance to explode? Bingo, bango, you have got yourself uh, like a near guaranteed win. Though I would have said the same thing with the Wiz existing at all. But with the Wiz plus anime girl, oh boy. Oh boy. Food? Yes. Food in that cabinet too, maybe? Or medical supplies, I wouldn't complain about that. I want more cats. I want like a dozen cats. But the only other way for her to spawn cats is to take damage, and I'd rather her not take damage. So, I guess I'm okay with the amount of cats we have. We've been that way. There we go, there's another room to go to. All right, I think we're gonna get a decent amount of loot here in this uh, lost stronghold or lost safe house or whatever it was called. Boom. Come on. I guess, apparently, once you down a zombie, all damage it takes after that is increased. Oh, I didn't realize this door was already open. That's why I threw that thing, because I thought I was gonna have to open the door. Boom. All right. Uh, I'm an idiot. I was like, why aren't they fighting? Because we didn't tell them to. Gotta remember to do that earlier. Uh, like, the, that's the first thing we should do in every every run, is switch our people to fighting. Maybe not uh, smashing right away. Though, yeah, because we typically don't start with very many guns to begin with, so there's no real reason not to switch them to smashing. Because we want to conserve our ammo such that it'll be more useful when we actually need it. I'll take a meat cleaver, but I'm not going to use it. Not right away. I'll take a nail board, but I'm not going to use it. Not right away. Okay. This is going fine. Uh, some people might say that this victory doesn't count because of the crazy cat lady, but I say uh, those people should be quiet. And, you know, your opinion matters. But, not to me. That's not true. If you, uh, don't know. I think when, when the characters are in testing, that's a really fun time to use them. Because, you know, they might have fun bugs that we get to witness right here, right now, folks. But, um, I guess if you don't like it that I'm taking OP characters that are being gifted to us, essentially... I guess tell me, and it, it's probably not going to happen very much in the future. We're not going to get opportunities to do that all the time. But if it happens again, I, I might not do it. I'll just wait to get them in a more organic way. Okay, I think we're safe from those zombies if we're going to this building. And then we'll take care of the rest of them before we go into the next building. I wish we were a little bit stronger. I also wish I was a little bit taller, and I wish I was a baller. Alrighty. So far, so good. The cat seems more overpowered than regular cats. Maybe it's just because since they're not part of our party, we don't have to deal with them not having a big inventory and stuff like that. We don't, we don't really... I, I'm not considering their inventory management. It's, or their health. I'm only considering the fact that they're fighting. So, in that regard, yeah, they're, they are better than regular cats. The only cat we've had is the, uh, the witch's cat, though. Because other than that, cats are super rare. And I think the witch is going to be more rare in the future as well. Wow, that chair did not hold up very well. I would be willing to bet that they bought that chair at a bargain store that uh, is not known for high quality products. 
Because you can get some pretty high quality stuff at some bargain stores, but not all bargain stores. Not, not all of them allow you to get actual good stuff. Some stores sell products that are on clearance because they are like older, uh, not used, but like out of season or out of style. They were originally stocked three years ago and didn't sell very well, so now they're selling them at this discount store and they're perfectly high quality. Just people didn't like them for whatever reason, and that's just fine. But when you're specifically manufacturing goods that are meant to be incredibly inexpensive, such that you turn a profit because they have to be replaced over and over again, I can go to a store and buy a $10 spatula that'll, or okay, now prices are a lot higher than that, like now. So I could go to a store and get a, I don't know, a $12 spatula, $15 spatula, and I'm like, man, that is too expensive. I can't afford to spend that much on a spatula. All it does is, uh, oh, a spatula. Okay, well, you know, all it does is flip my burgers and my pancakes. Why, why should I uh, spend $15 on that when this one here is $1.50? But that $15 spatula, would have lasted, like, through my lifetime and my children's and their children's. I've got really, I don't personally have them. My parents have really old uh, utensils that only stopped working for whatever uh, they're supposed to be doing. If we did something stupid, like left it on a really hot stovetop or something like that for an hour. You know, and they melted because we're dumb. But uh, if we hadn't done that, they would have lasted forever. And they cost 15 bucks. But if you want to buy the uh, $2 spatula and save a little bit of money, you're going to be replacing that spatula every three months because the handle comes off or uh, it cracks in half or it melts in the middle of a two second pancake flip or something like that. And in that case, you know, you're gonna be spending a lot more on $2 spatulas than if you just bought the $15 spatula outright. How can anyone be sad when there's so many kitties? Uh, everyone knows dogs are way better. The group goes against their judgment and camps in a city apartment because there's no zombies around. When they wake up, the building is on fire, but Margaret is cool about fire safety. Uh -huh. Margaret always has a fire safety plan prepared. It doesn't matter where he is. Margaret constantly thinks up new fire safety plans. All supplies were saved, no one was injured, and morale goes up. That's very nice. We're 13 days from Canada. The same happens with furniture. I bought a futon once. I chipped in for a futon uh, when I was living with a bunch of friends. Weapon stealing bandits. As the group explores the campsite, they are ambushed, blah, blah, blah. We can tell them to cool it or Margaret can come to the rescue. This is why we start with a paranoid person. Margaret felt suspicious. Uh, Loyalty is revealed is actually really bad. Dog and Pony is surprised Margaret didn't try to steal the car. He looks nervous for a moment. His loyalty is bad. But Mar uh, everyone's morale goes up, so that's nice. Yeah, chipped in for a futon. And it didn't even last a full year. And it cost a hundred bucks. Visit the trader camp for a piece of... What? I think the cat spawned in a cloud of genie and or ninja smoke. But yeah, futon didn't even last a year. Whereas, I know futons are notorious for being uncomfortable and breaking down quickly. But that's not really true. You can get a futon that lasts for decades and stays comfortable. We're going to leave him. And... Products used to be manufactured such that that was always the case. But now, people manufacture goods. Uh, we're going to tell this person to cool it. Just specifically so that they break down and then you buy more. So you could probably, nowadays, you can buy like a $250 futon and it would still be pretty bad. It would break down within a few years. But you can, you can probably still find a nice futon that'll last you forever. 
But no, you spend a hundred bucks and you have to replace it every six months. It's crazy. Uh, we get kicked out of the trader camp, obviously, or we flee it. And uh, that is all for now. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and I will see you in the next episode.